Hey guys, I just did a speech at my college on secret societies, and I thought I was going to get booed or laughed at or something, and I actually got interrupted right in the middle, because it was obviously way too long, and in fact, everybody was stunned silent, it seemed, and then a few people wanted me to keep going, so I thought that was pretty cool. So hopefully I got some good information that you guys are going to appreciate, and hopefully this project will turn out a little bit more successful online when I can uh, include most of my visual aids and stuff because I ran out right at the good part. It sucked. Anyway, here we go. I was talking about what Isaac Newton, Leonardo da Vinci, and Benjamin Franklin all have in common. Isaac Newton and da Vinci were all members of the Priory of Sion. Benjamin Franklin was a Freemason. And what's interesting is the Priory of Sion, Freemasonry, and um, what do you call it? Uh, the Knights Templar were all sort of kind of intertwined. They were not all in one, sort of say, but they were all kind of involved with each other. Anyway, they were all members of some of the most notorious secret societies in the history of the world. Now, what was their goal and what secret knowledge did they possess? Were they all cultic Satanists? Today, I hope to answer some of these questions by applying Sir Isaac Newton's scientific method to some of the most important periods of history, starting with the Enlightenment area. And if you don't know what the scientific method is, it's observing uh, research papers, books, and things like that, and gathering data and forming hypothesis on it. Now, were these men rare specimens of once-in-a-lifetime genius, or did they achieve their soul, their knowledge through more sinister means by selling their souls to demons? The Greek word for knowledge equates to demons, so I suppose it is possible. Conspiracy theorists argue that modern mystics knew how to open ancient stargates that allowed communion with the gods. And that is true. If you go back and you look at some ancient... I think this book was written by a mason, the CW... I'd really recommend this one. This is called Ancient Mystic Rites, and I think this is Set... Or no, that's Set or Sekhmet, I can't exactly remember, I just know the gist of the story. And this is Ra, or Amon Ra, and he's basically the sun god, and that's where, you're, where you'll see the, you know, the Illuminati eye. That's his sign. And basically he battles him, and he conquers him uh, in the morning time, so the light overcomes the darkness, and then at dusk, uh, Set, or Sekhmet, whatever his name is, conquers him, and the darkness overcomes. That's why the Masons are so into duality, like, they're black and white checkered floors, and all that, and they're really, and, and they also really follow these ancient mystery school rites of being reborn, and that's why they do all these strange rituals. It doesn't really have anything to do with death. It is... It's just really uh, bizarre, is what I'll say. Anyway, what, where was I going? Let's keep going. So, anyway, yeah, if you watch the show Ancient Aliens, you'll see that a lot of ancient cultures had advanced technology and designed their temples according to astrological signs. Now, back to the ancient Egyptians here, we still cannot replicate their temples using some of the most highly advanced engineering techniques and uh, construction machinery today. We can't lift them stones, we can't cut them, and we got lasers and stuff, so it's crazy. And also the way the temples are designed, I wish I had a visual aid for that, but I didn't. And uh, the way the temples are designed is you can see certain constellations throughout the day. And also the sun will set in the middle, there, there's three temples, there's two small ones and then there's the great temple. And what it, never mind. Anyway. This is where it gets interesting. The word occult is often all associated with devil worship, when in fact it simply means hidden from view. According to Nick Harding in his book, 1998 book, Secret Societies, all occult-like secret societies share a few common facts, and they are as follows. All secret societies claim secret knowledge, and they claim to be the chosen keepers of the said knowledge. Their secret knowledge is truth and stems from long ancient lines like Egypt and Babylonia. They are constantly persecuted and accused of hidden agendas. They are leadist and flaunt it with secret hand signs and handshakes, often have a messiah-like leader who threatens dire consequences should the secrets be revealed. The greatest secret is there is no secret and they use their perceived power to induce irrational fear that breeds conspiracy. Now this one is interesting. They swear oaths of secrecy and often mock the rebirthing rituals of the ancient mystery schools, which signifies the old ancient 
ignorant self dying and the new enlightened self being born. Kind of like the born again Christian philosophy. But what they don't understand is, you know, the uh, baptism is symbolic. It's it's not magic holy water. Family Guy made fun of it. The dog, he said, you know, it's not some magic holy water that's going to cure you or something like that. And what he doesn't understand, it's just a symbolic act of washing away your old evil doing self and committing yourself to a life of righteousness. So anyway, with that being said, I want to highlight this point once more. Because they swear oaths of secrecy, all of them, they all swear oaths of secrecy to never reveal their secrets and that they're, the, they're these chosen ones of something. And we're going to keep that in mind because I literally got two quotes here that really hint at it. Uh, a secret society in our history and it's from John F. Kennedy and instead of me reading it I'm gonna go ahead and cut this here and I'm gonna let you hear it from himself uh, I just wanna read a f one part because I think it's what really is important and I wanted to highlight that remember about the secret oaths as he says we are inherently opposed to secret society secret oaths and to secret proceedings so I mean, he says right there, a lot of debunkers say he's talking about, like, communism and the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it has nothing to do with that. If he was talking about the Cuban Missile Crisis, he would be, you know. So, okay, anyway, I'm going to cut it here. Another quote from a famous American politician, J. Edgar Hoover was also a Freemason, and he was the head director of the FBI, and he, he said this. He said, the individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he can't believe it exists. Now, that does sound very suspicious until you read the rest of the quote. This one is about communism, and it, the rest says, the American mind simply has not come to the realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst it rejects even the assumption that human creatures could expose a philosophy which must destroy all that is good and decent and if you're looking for that quote it is in the Elks magazine in August 1956 and where is the Kennedy one this is a portion of the speech he gave it at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel the president and the press and it's from Jill April 27th, 1961. So if you want to look at these speeches for yourselves, go ahead and do that. Now we're talking about our forefathers, like George Washington and stuff, attempting to do these same mystery school uh, rituals, like astrology, like the ancient Egyptians, to achieve some kind of, uh, you know, sacred knowledge. Secret knowledge through that way. So let's see what we can find out about that. Now Manly P. Hall, we got his book right here, and we're going to check that out says in his book, he's a 33rd degree Freemason, and he's a highly influential Freemason philosopher. So him and Albert Pike are probably, this is the cover, but there's Washington right there in the black and white floorboard I was talking about. Anyway, him and Albert Pike are the sources for Masonic philosophy, if you ask me and many other researchers. Anyway, now what he says in this book is that the Mason must realize that the ancient mystic teachings as perpetuated in the modern rites are sacred, and that powers unseen and un unrecognized mold the destiny of those who consciously and of their own free will take upon themselves the obligations of the fraternity. The Masonic ritual is not a ceremony, but a life to be lived. Go ahead and ponder that for a minute, and just reflect and see what you think he means by that. Powers unseen and, and unrecognized. What do you think that is? You know, like angels and demons, maybe? I don't know. Let's move on, though. Now, here's another source. C.W. Leadbeater, but I was already talking about this. So, he says in the book... The student of occultism therefore learns to awaken and train for scientific use the powers latent within him. He learns that each man is in essence divine, a veritable spark of God's fire, gradually evolving towards a future of glory. Now, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's why a lot of these guys get deceived. That was Satan's lie from the beginning. Knowledge makes you a god. And... I don't think that's true. I mean, it may make you it may make you enlightened, so they like to call themselves, but it doesn't make you a god. Now, 
Okay, now I want to briefly discuss the ideology of the two main secret societies, the Illuminati and the Freemasons. I would also like to briefly discuss their history and if they are actually devil worshippers. So, my research has revealed that Masons believe in a god without the boundaries of religion, and they refer to him as the great architect of the universe. They believe in a self-trinity of improving the mind, body, and the spirit to achieve enlightenment. They participate in ancient mystery school rituals. One of their sayings is, as above, so below, and that's a common theme to the Baphomet, which we're going to get here to here in a second. And uh, if you'll think of the Our Father prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, below, as it is in heaven, above. Interesting, no? Anyway, what else do they believe? In fact, Time Magazine uh, did a special, which I'm going to show you in a second here. Time Magazine states that, Time would like to report that Masons do indeed exert surprising sway over the American political landscape. Interesting indeed, no? Because about a third of the presidents were Freemasons. A few of them were from the Skull and Bone Society. A majority of them attend Bilderberg meetings, as well as uh, the Bohemia Club in California. So, you know, these, are, th these coincidences are starting to stack up, and they just seem a little bit too much to be a coincidence. Also, Time also said Benjamin Franklin joined a Philadelphia Lodge, and while in France guided Voltaire. I, I used to love Voltaire. Uh, uh, he's a French philosopher, and he's, I got a, a bunch of quotes on my Facebook page from him. And anyway, he was said to have guided Voltaire through the ancient mystery schools. In fact, many highly prominent Enlightenment thinkers have been members of secret societies, including George Washington, Isaac Newton, Leonardo da Vinci, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Voltaire. Many secret societies are intertwined, like I was saying, the Knights Templar, uh, Isaac Newton and da Vinci were said to be Grand Masters of the Priory of Sion, which was um, connected the Knights Templar, which was connected to the Freemasons and the building of Solomon's Temple, but I don't want to ramp on and on and on and on about that so let's um, keep going with some of these pictures here here's some of my visual visual aids now I learned about this picture the apotheosis of Washington where Washington is ascending to a god here I actually got a little video of that I'm going to include hopefully and this here is where the the Roman it's very important you take note that these are all Roman goddess Roman gods and goddesses this here is Mithra bestowing her ancient mystical knowledge upon Benjamin Franklin and the guy F B Morse I think his name is for Morse code now isn't that interesting because the ancient Egyptians are said to have done the same thing as well as the Babylonians uh, what do you call them the Aztecs and all of them you know they were said to have achieved their knowledge through star gods and all that and uh, before I get keep going to the Illuminati I wanted to finish the visual aids up so the book I heard that from and is from Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol and if you're thinking that sounds familiar it is it's because he wrote the Da Vinci Code and it's really interesting I, I never read his stuff until I saw that it intertwined with my project and then I went and read all his books as you can see Angels and Demons uh, law symbol. Anyway, he's talking about Washington and the Masons and all that, and he talks about that painting. And he does a lot of good research, and he has a really great way of blending a fictional story into great research and making it, you know, make pe making people ask questions. But a lot of people can't separate the fact from the fiction. So this book was pretty cool. Anyway, here's some of the Freemason symbols that we're going to discuss. The G is actually for God and geometry, a dual meaning. The I, it can mean quite a few things. They call it the eye of prominence or providence, one of the two. And I still think it's from the eye of Ra, the ancient uh, Egyptian sun god. Uh, the important ones are the pillars. There's always two pillars. I can't remember exactly what they were. Um, and then the checkered floor is important. Then you'll see the trowel and all their the square and compass and all their building tools.